Welcome to Workout Wednesday Week 18 Solution Video. So in this week's challenge, it's a little bit different uh, where we are going to take an existing uh, workbook and we are going to try to make something that takes forever and a day to load. So obviously I'm in a minute and 45 and counting um, seconds to actually render this view. And so this is kind of like watching paint dry. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to kind of get across with this challenge is you can have the most complex technique, the most amazing, beautiful looking dashboard with amazing insights. But if it takes this long to actually render the view, who actually wants to use it? So performance is actually one of those things that could actually make or break whether or not um, users want to adopt your dashboard as a part of their normal flow and cadence of looking at their, their data. And so we're going to just do some quick and easy tips and tricks to actually get there. So our goal is to move from this two minutes plus of render time down to um, under half of a second. So that's a, a, a big gap. Uh, a big jump, but it's absolutely critically important just for the simple fact that like most people are used to web pages loading in a fraction of a second, right? And so like um, if it takes forever and a day to load, um, people will actually stop using it or they'll think something's wrong and, uh, and you know, hit the X button just to make sure that, you know, it's not them. So let's go through and um, let's get started. So we have like a super basic dashboard, right? There's nothing amazing going on here. It's a lot of data, a lot of detail. Um, and so when you, you know, click on anything and I'm not going to click on anything just yet because it takes forever to load. Um, you know, I, it will filter the table below. All right. So I'm going to actually click into this view <laughs> clearly. See, when you have a poor performing dashboard, your computer doesn't like it. Um, all right, let's unhide this sheet so we're gonna play around with it. So let's see what's going on. So the first thing that um, I see is that I have a blended data source. Okay, not the greatest, um, you know, cause blending actually uh, does slow down your performance. So it's super easy to do, cause all you gotta do is click that link button just to link the two data sources together. But from a performance perspective, not the best. Um, and then I'll, let me go ahead and check out this data source just to see what's happening. It's a live connection. So what the first thing that you'll want to do is actually turn this into an extract. So if you don't need real time data, like an extract works uh, perfectly, right? It it will cache it all together. It doesn't have to reach back into the data source, uh, whether it's a database or a file on your computer. In this instance, it's all kind of cached in there, right? And so it makes it easy to kind of um, retrieve um, from that. So I'm going to create a, an extract uh, first. And so we're just going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to take a minute because it takes this about more than it's actually over 2 million records on in this uh, data set. And all of this is running locally. So like, you know, um, your computer is going to be like the little engine that could, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Right. Um, so, um, I wish I had some Jeopardy music to make this, uh, you know, less of an amazing date, but I guess you, uh, you can listen to me, uh, just blabber on. We're almost there. Um, about 400,000 or so, uh, to go. All right, so I have my extract created. I'm, I'm cooking with fish grease now. So the, the thing that in the challenge gave me a hint, I only care about the continuous United States and I only care about OBGYNs, right? So I am gonna do an extract filter For that and I'm going to create one for state just so that I can have the continuous United States I'm going to include everything except for I 
think Puerto Rico is in there somewhere. Yep. Okay. And the other thing we saw is that we had that blending data situation. So I actually want to um, bring that secondary data source and bring it as a part of my main data source. So I'm just going to bring it in. All right. And we're going to lasso it in via relationships. Now Tableau is smart enough to figure out that, uh, you know, to kind of do the, the join, not the join, but the, what we want to relate on the fields. So that's awesome. So we're just going to uh, let that extract probably update and let that run. And then we'll go from kind of having that weird blending situation once this is all done to having everything kind of live on the primary. That'll help with our performance uh, quite a bit. And I'm just going to pause the video so you don't have to wait for this to actually happen. And we'll just jump. All right, we're almost done. Cool beans. Okay, so I still got that blending in there. So we got to update some of these calcs, right? Um, to kind of reflect that. So I'm just going to drop this on top. And then I'm going to go to that providers per capita because I think that's also a secondary. It leverages the secondary source. And you can tell that something's activated. So I think it's that, just knowing what I know about this. And so I'm just going to drop population on top of here. And now you can tell because the orange check mark is gone that nothing is using that data source. So I'm just going to go ahead and close it because we don't need it. Um, also, I see a lot of fields here, and based off of what I remember about the, both the table and this and this map, most of these things actually aren't needed. And so I don't need Tableau to spend any of its energy trying to like wade through all this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide all unused fields. So the only thing that will uh, kind of remain um, visible and you know from a processing perspective, um, you know, impactful is just the fields that I'm using to support my views in the workbook. So now that's going to make things uh, exponentially um, faster. Um, so then I am going to go back to my view and it's, and it's faster, but it's still not great. All right. So we got, let's just say five to 10 seconds. Again, not awesome. Um, and we can do better. So let's figure out what's going on with this table. Cause I think this is actually what's dragging down a lot of it. Because like I said, each of these elements are individual marks. And this is a lot, These this is a lot of marks. So the first thing we're gonna do is something super quick and easy. Um, we're just gonna reorder things to get the, reduce the number of marks in the view. So instead of having each, you know, all of this, each state kind of uh, being a mark, um, we actually just, I, I just want to want to have one mark for the name of the state instead of all of the marks. So we're just going to reorder some of these fields to help that happen. Oh, looks like I got rid of something. Press our friendly back button. All right. So this is going to perform a lot better because we have a lot less marks here, but we still have a lot of rows. So what I'm actually going to do is leverage um, pagination to truly control the number of marks in this view. So all I'll have to do is create a parameter um, and two calculated fields. So we're just going to call this page size. Change that into an integer. Let's see a range. Let's just put that right there. Okay, that should work pretty well. Let's create our first calculated field and we'll just call this index. Okay. And our 
second calculate field and we'll just call this page number. And all this is going to be is the new index field over our page size parameter. I want to wrap this up in an integer and we're going to add one. Cool. And I'm going to change this to discrete. And just to see how it plays. All right. So it looks like oh, all of this is one, which is not what we wanted. So we probably just need to compute this uh, using table down. And yeah, it looks like it's working, right? There's 15, probably it looks like 15 marks per view. I'm just going to go ahead and filter so that I only have the first page showing. And then people can kind of use the filter control to, um, you know, kind of scroll through. Well, not scroll through, but uh, kind of page through. All right. Okay. And then let's just go ahead and add our filter control. And of course, I would probably place this somewhere else, but for the speed of the video, like we'll just do it this way. Yeah, um, it, we can make it look pretty for some other time. I'm going to actually get rid of some of these quick filters because um, another thing that um, kind of slows down a dashboard and a lot of um, organizations are kind of guilty of this is having like 8 billion quick filters um, just in case and that really slows things down. And so what you really do want to do is leverage like things like dashboard actions or something else um, in its place. So I'm going to get rid of this. I don't need this anymore because I, it's actually in my, um, you know, it's part of the, the actual data set and the extract filter. I'll keep city. And, you know, if I was feeling froggy, what I could do is, um, you know, have uh, a view for, you know, uh, gender. But let me uh, take a look and see what's happening here. Oh, it. All right, so it looks like, oh, this is excludes filter uh, values. So you know, one of the, the kind of tricky things is that exclude uh, from a performance perspective is a lot heavier than include values. And so what we'll want to do is change that to include values um, versus exclude, right? And so if someone kind of clicks on any of these things then like they can kind of keep that moving. All right. So we've done quite a bit. We've got rid of our blended data source. We created an extract. We have an extract filter. We've leveraged pagination to control the number of marks in the view. Um, we have, and you know, like we've done quite a bit. Now there's some stuff where if you're really getting fancy, you want to kind of take this to the closest thing to zero. One of the things that you could do is, um, so uh, you could, as if you click on a state, you know, then the table appears, but if, if no state is selected, then the table can uh, disappear entirely, right? So that's one approach. Um, but, you know, just for the sake of the challenge to make it look exactly, almost exactly the same, um, but uh, without, you know, kind of changing, you know, too much of the, like it looks the same, but the kind of the way it works is differently. I'm going to leave the table in there, but the, just know that there's, um, even more things that we can do to kind of really performance tune this thing to make sure that it actually truly works, right? So I like the idea of getting rid of the table values because that just automatically eliminates all these marks unless something is selected. And also changing, if you can, like this stuff to be, um, you know, uh, to be like, let's say vises, you know, uh, versus like quick filters. Um, but let's just, you know, um, let's see, like, the, it's like now the moment of truth. And I want to see if this actually um, did what I thought it was going to do from a performance perspective. So I, I started my performance recorder. I went from to help, settings, and performance. And so it looks like it's running. So I'm going to just click on Texas, see how that works. And keep clicking on Texas. <laughs> uh, let's check out Oregon. All right, so it's moving a lot faster. Um, 
let's see we got some quick filters here that we can uh, select so and then let me just page through this see how that works all right so I've done a couple of actions so let's just see moment of truth am I um, under a half of a second or do I still have some work to do Yes, I am definitely under a half of a second. I am, so from a computing layout perspective, um, I'm under a tenth of a second, which is awesome. We got some, you know, executing the query work. So, I mean, this is, this is a dramatic improvement from something that takes two weeks, or not two weeks, but two, um, two minutes to render to something that takes um, a tenth of a second um, or less to actually render. So that, you know, just kind of shows just a few small tweaks in your workbook can actually lead to um, um, great results. Well, and with that, that is this week's solution video. If you have any questions, reach out to me on Twitter or wherever um, you can find me, and I will be happy to answer any questions. Thanks.